Hey guys, how's it going? Pretty excited here. I got a uh, special reveal that I wanted to share. We're going to start from the uh, desktop view. I wanted to provide some context to uh, an artist background. And then I got something in the mail today that's going to be coming to auction soon. So I just wanted to show that artwork live as I open that. But um, without further ado, I'm at the www.collectorarthouse.com website. If you go to the interviews and articles page, <clears throat> and then this is one of the very first interviews I did. So Scroll down there at the bottom. The first one I did was with Truett Parrish. I think he's most likely the young, it's between him, who who is the youngest artist in sorcery? It's either Truett, uh, Kyle Kalazans, who I'm gonna talk about today, and then Vasily Ermolayev, um, another great artist in Russia who's done some uh, amazing artwork for this game. But today uh, we're here to talk about Kyle. So I just wanted to jump in here, give you a little bit about Kyle's background. Kyle lives in uh, Sao Paulo. Brazil um, in this region here. These are some some pictures from his hometown and you go back and read this interview later But I just wanted to give you some context before I reveal some of his artwork on this collaboration that I did with him All right, so here you have all I don't know I don't think it's quite all but it's most of the original paintings. It's definitely not all because we're going to talk about the Drell uh, Drome dairy <clears throat> today which is the camel art, right? But he's done um, several landscape artworks, as you can see here. Uh, most are displayed here. There's the Quagmire, which I recently auctioned. Um, this was formerly called Stonehenge. I think they changed that to Standing Stones and a few others, right? Um, Uptown Ridge. And then you have um, interesting thing here. He did this artwork for Shifting Sands. And now keep that in mind. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit as I scroll through the rest of the interview here. But I just wanted to display his artwork, how amazing like his landscape art is. Um, Kyo's background is he comes from the Magic the Gathering altar scene. And he, um, you know, he started from nothing really in, in terms of art, uh, formal training. He had no formal training whatsoever. I think he still does not to this day. He's pretty much self-taught and he's a pretty young guy as you can see, right? So to get to this level of talent at such a young age, just grinding away and teaching yourself is super impressive. Um, so he came from, uh, he really earned his name through Magic the Gathering Altars. He played magic. Um, he was just into the artwork and thought it was cool watching other people do altars. And I was like, hey, I'll give it a shot, you know, work hard. Maybe I can aspire to get to that level. And you see that he has, right? Let me zoom in on this one. This is a, you know, the resolution's not perfect here, but this is a three piece artist proof um, artwork that he did on the back of three cards, right? Or actually, I'm not sure if it's an, it's not an artist proof, right? Because that, that would have meant he would have had to be commissioned for magic, which is not the case. What he does is alters. So he takes magic cards, does a lot of work with the magic lands. As you can see here, these are the forest artworks. Um, and that's one example of an altar he had done. Here's another one for a forest. And I think um, this is actually a time-lapse video. So go back and check this out. You can kind of see his process in a accelerated time-lapse. Um, but look how amazing his artwork is. If you look at, you know, Magic has the islands, the swamps, the plains, the forests as their mana sources. Um, beautiful island. Uh, there's many examples of this. If you go to his Instagram, he has a Facebook page where he does MTG altar artwork. But I just wanted to paint a picture for you there for context. It's the Updraft Ridge. There you go. That's the original painting or a scan of it. You know, he did this in 2020. So this game has been in development for several years now and they're finally getting very close to release. So it's a very exciting time. All right, so let me keep going. Um, here I was just comparing a piece he did to one that Rafaela Ketch did. She goes by Aranja Arts, which I talked about in my last video. There you can kind of see her call sign. Um, and here we here's the Drome Dairy. So we're gonna talk about this one today. There's the original painting that he did for that that artwork for the game. And um, going down a little bit more, the last thing I wanted to point out before we leave his page is if you look at um, Shifting Sands here. So he did a artwork um, for, this is like one of the basic clans, right? There's a Shifting Sands by another artist and I'm gonna jump to that in a moment. Um, but I have a theory here that we are likely to possibly see um, in, beta 
or maybe in Arthurian legends, some land, alternate art lands, or maybe, you know, they'll surprise us in alpha. I'm not sure. But I know that there was paintings commission for some of these basic lands that are either going to be discarded and not used, or we're going to see in some form or factor, some way, somehow in a future release. So here's Shifting Sands. That's Kyle's version of it. Really beautiful, nicely done artwork, right? Um, so I would think uh, hopefully Eric can find a use for that. But if I go to, now let's go to the version. If you go to Sorcery Cards menu at the top, right? Um, these are all the latest cards that are going to be included for Alpha. So let me go to Kyo's page first. Oh, went too far. So I go to Kyo Kalazans, and these are the ones that have been re revealed for uh, the Alpha release. So we have the Rel Drome Dairy. I'm going to talk about that one in a bit. And you see the different um, Atlas site cards, right? So you don't see the Shifting Sands. So if I go back to Sorcery Cards, and I want to go to the top and show you how I have it organized by artist. This is a kind of cool little thing where I pro profile each of the artists so you can get to learn about them more, see what they look like. Um, and if I go down, it's in alphabetical order. So if I go down to Vasily Ermolayev, you see another young guy here. Um, check out Vasily. Scroll down a bit. He's done several spells and lands. And there you have it, Shifting Sands, right? So we have two artworks for Shifting Sands. One we've seen in card form. And then actually, if I go back a few, interesting thing here. Notice the artwork. This is Vasily's signature style. It's pretty um, unique and unmistakable. Um, so that's the one we're going to see in Alpha, right? But if I go back to the Kyle interview, and probably the easiest way to do that is to arrow back a few times. Um, somewhere in here, here we go. So we've seen this card before as a in a template right now this could have just been the templating going back and forth with eric to kind of stage it and see what it looked like but if i remember correctly this may have been revealed for a prior tts simulator update so there might have been a flip-flop of which art eric ultimately selected for the alpha release um but you know it makes you wonder are we going to see this in beta as an alt art are we going to see it in alpha as an alt art who knows all right so let's go to the camera now um so bear with me a moment gonna kill this one and that should take us to the video yes okay all right so why am i showing the bazaar of baghdad it's not a sorcery artwork it's a mtg artwork right but you're gonna see the relevance in a minute right so i just got this from kayo today i opened the outside of the packaging so you don't see mine or his shipping address but really because you should never hastily open artwork and don't do it on camera i kind of wanted i left a few pieces of tape right but you never want to risk opening artwork cleanly um so i just wanted to take some precautions he, he, ta he taped this up very well and he's got a nice seal too that he puts on it so i don't know exactly what's in here i know a few of the things that we worked on collaboratively for this project but i'm not sure if you included any of the proof of concept type things we were working on so let's see what we have here okay all right i've been waiting on this for a couple weeks you know he's down in brazil i'm here in the u.s in northern virginia so it takes a bit of time you know to ship overseas and let's see interesting bag type thing see if there's a try to rip this from the top all right that should do it no scissors so we're winging it and there's a few pieces in here Let's try to delicately hear that okay There's several in here. Okay. All right. Let me toss that. Get this junk out of here. My daughter's mouse. I got to buy myself a respectable mouse. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go again. Ooh. Here we go again. All right. We'll try these one at a time. And I don't know if they're going to be in order, right? All right, so this is interesting. This is actually perfect because this is the first proof of concept that we drew up. Um, so this is actually a, a sketch and you see 
if I raise this up a little bit, let me zoom just a touch. All right. So this first one, it says test printing, right? So this is a test print. It's a different type of paper material. Um, you see his signature at the bottom, his initials. And so when I talked to Kylo about this, you know, there's a story that Eric tells. I talked about this in a couple other videos where this very simple, ordinary creature, I think he called it the simplest of, what did he call it? I'm forgetting the term, but it was pretty hilarious. He was saying it was basically, basically like a, almost like a worthless, um, just very basic uh, creature, this card as it stands alone in the game, right? It's kind of, so it has limited utility, low power level, cheap mana cost, you know, you just kind of throw it out there. But there's this other car a card called the Doomsday Device, and it has this awesome mechanic where it ticks down for six turns, and then on turn six, it detonates, and it does this great splash damage effect you could only get in a grid-based game like this right so it hits like the center the target where it explodes and then around that it does some peripheral damage to all the neighboring sites at least and actually a few sites over so it's a big splashy card with a huge effect and uh, he describes that as the kind of the experiential um, concept of the game where you're, you're going through and um, you really like resonate with the artwork with the game mechanics you really kind of have fun with it and, and feel some big splashy effects across the, the board state, across the grid, right? So he had this idea, and we talked to Elvira, Elvira uh, Palakowska, who did the Doomsday Device, reached out to her, and I was like, hey, I'm talking to Kayo. We had this cool idea of strapping the Doomsday Device to the back of the camel to kind of mirror the story that Eric told in a couple interviews. And she, we told her we wanted to use her Doomsday Device. Was she okay with us doing that? And she was really cool and said, like, yeah, that's an awesome idea. Go for it. And uh, here it is. This is the mock-up. He drew this up on top. It looks like it was done with pen or ink or something. And um, it's to mirror that story, right? So there's your test print. I'm going to go to the next one. Here is the one of three, right? So we did three versions of these. They're very limited. I'm not sure if he'll do something different in the past. You know, he's really pressed for time. He's trying to make a career of this. Um, so this is something unique and special. He just did in limited fashion. Um, but this one's really cool. So now here you get the full painted effect. This you got to go look at the doom, the, the uh, doomsday device on my website, collectorarthouse.com. Um, this is it looks closely resembles this. Of course, it's much larger because it takes up the full image of the actual doomsday device car uh, card. But it's really awesome and masterful how he did this together. Right? If you remember the original, it had nothing on its back at all, and then he he came up with this clever concept to sh to show it strewn across the uh the drone dairy so one of three rail drone dairy that's the name we actually coined this turn six kind of jokingly um nothing on the back okay so here's how why we have the bazaar of baghdad right so here's the bazaar of baghdad done by jeff Mangas back in the 90s you know this was from the arabian Nights set the first expansion for magic the gathering um so when i looked at this this uh land right this background it kind of remind me of like that that whole vibe from arabian nights and it was really cool that jeff um jeff Menges is a uh alpha artist you know in the game um or he was for magic and he is for sorcery right so um you know, Kayo's a, a magic player. He's now going to be a sorcery player and a sorcery artist, which is incredible. Um, so we had this funny, cool concept, just talking back and forth. Like, how, what do you try? How do you? Let's try to reimagine this guy as if in this cart, instead of he, instead of having this china that he's bringing to the bazaar for sale, he has these little doomsday devices, and he's making something of this camel that otherwise serves very little purpose and utility, right? So he has the little doomsday devices in the um, cart. And then we have the alpha symbol there up front. He painted that on there as a homage to alpha. And then he has the doomsday device strapped around its neck. <laughs> so that's number two of three. Um, and that's really cool. You know, I'm noticing now that these little swans or birds are up here in the sky. And on this one, that is obscured by the doomsday device. So that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, that's so that's really masterfully done. I mean, it's... It's pretty incredible because the the backdrop of this is a print, and then this is just painted on like seamlessly. It looks like the the whole thing could be a print. It, it's just this whole card. It just looks like it's been there the whole time. It just blends seamlessly, like it's its own. You know that was the original design almost. All right, so that's number two of three. 
And then number three of three, the finale. This is turn six, you know, after the detonation. <laughs> wow, look at that. So again, I guess the swans, um, looking back, that's something I didn't notice before. These birds up in the sky are actually part of the original artwork. And then you have the text box up here, right? Um, but this is um, something we started with and enhanced. So in the original, um, you don't have like some of these details, obviously. This is the detonated doomsday device. You kind of see pieces of it. Here you have it with the fuse and the backdrop. And then some parts of it, this smoke. You know, I don't know if it, it doesn't completely do it justice on camera here, but this smoke looks masterfully done, like really cool all around here and here. It looks like real smoke. Um, and then he has the fuse from the doomsday device, all these different shards. Like originally he just had the smoke and I was like, well, so we don't have to have a frame of reference as the viewer has this displayed on their wall. Whoever purchases this, when we bring it to auction, uh, it'll be obvious what this is. You see the doomsday device in the background with the fuse, part of the fuse, the rest of it sprayed over here shards from the actual doomsday device strewn all around and uh the smoke and you have little flame embers and you know this is coming this is coming across like a with a weird yellow hue but this is actually more of a brownish color um when you see this it looks very natural and it's it's really amazing because again it just blends so perfectly as if that camel was never there uh, he, he, you know, he printed it with the camel. He had to completely recreate this and imagine what this background would be, uh, if that camel had not been there. And it just looks so seamless and natural fitting with the, with the surroundings. When you look at the color here, as I hold it in my hand, it's actually very close. Um, it's just continuous throughout and it's showing, showing up a little different on camera, at least in the view I'm seeing on my monitor. Maybe it's just my monitor settings and this will, this will show better when I run the video back, but it looks just like perfect. Like it, that's the way it was just meant to be the whole time. And it's snapped and detonated at the knees and a smoking mess and uh, left in a, a realm of ruin. <laughs> so that's it guys. Those are the three Kyo prints. Um, we're going to auction these three through the Facebook page and the collector art house discord. I always have those linked in the notes on these videos. Um, and then I don't know if what I'll do with the sketch. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep that as a keepsake or end up doing a giveaway someday. Um, but yeah, thanks to Kyle for including that. That's really cool. Um, but definitely the three, you know, I'm not keeping these, um, these three will, will be for auction. Most of the proceeds go to Kyle. Um, I work with a lot of the artists on concepts like this. These are the first couple that we've done. Um, but there's going to be more to come. I really love this crossover idea and it works really well, um, with these artists that come from the MTG altar scene. And, um, you know, we could do things like this for artist proofs. Um, there'll be altars once the game's out, but I love this idea. I haven't seen this a lot where there's crossovers within the game. And then this, this one, this is a one-off. The magic one is kind of like, uh, this is alpha, you know, one-time deal. Um, there's some correlation and, influence from sorcery um uh from magic on sorcery um to kind of shape the early stages of the game so i thought this would be really cool to have kind of like a homage to jeff mangas and um you know just the magic's history and how it's influenced sorcery and early going here and then you know we'll, we'll get away from that because sorcery's got to be its own thing and it is you know it's very different um the way the game is played uh the style of art um the loose, uh, you know, lore. There is no lore. It's just like a loose compilation of many different artistic styles. Um, but these are really awesome. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this today. It was fun opening it on camera. Went fairly smoothly. Um, so look out for this soon. We'll probably do the first one over the next few days. Today's, uh, what, November 16th. So maybe, yeah, over the next day or two, maybe we'll get this going. I'll put out an announcement to everybody. Um, but yeah, thanks as always, guys, for your interest. Please like and subscribe and share the video. And um, stay tuned for more to come. I got some uh, a big lot of sample cards coming in in a few days, so I'm definitely going to show those off and uh, look forward to telling some stories about the artist and some of the art concepts on some of those sample cards. Um, so thanks again, guys. Everybody take care. Until next time, I'll see you.